I think a lot of people don't realize in terms of time that this does take time and it is a real business. And if you treat it like a real business. Hey folks, welcome back to the call. It's Neil from the High Voltage Business Builders Podcast. I have Amy Weiss with me here today. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me. All right. So tell us a little bit about yourself. I'll give the quick you know, synopsis and then I'll let you dig in as we've talked about before. I don't like to give everybody the bullet point reading font, but I do know you've been in the Amazon space for a while. Uh, you're helping to support businesses that grow, helping them to accelerate their sales and profitability. And I'm sure you want to expand on that. So give us some more about who you are, your background and what you're doing. Yeah. So um, thank you so much for having me, Neil. I started selling on Amazon in 2007 while I was in the United States Air Force and I was flipping my college textbooks. So that's uh, how I kind of figured out that Amazon was a thing and you could sell on there. And it was just a hobby back then. And then in 2017, I was working in cybersecurity and I came up with a better way to clean the cat litter box. Um, And even though I have an MBA and a couple of undergraduate business degrees, I didn't know how to take this rickety prototype that I had built and turn it into a real product on the market. And I saw a real gap even of other Amazon sellers, stuff like that, people weren't really developing products. You know, there wasn't a lot of product development going on. There was a lot of copycatting going on. There's a lot of, you know, selling what's already out there. But I didn't really see a clear path to market. I tried out for Shark Tank. I, you know, cold called so many manufacturers. I had to get molds made, all kinds of stuff. And I just decided, you know, I'm I'm one of those people that just, lead follower get the hell out of my way. And I said, you know, I'm just going to figure this out and I'm going to share it with everybody who will listen Uh, because I know there's other people out there that have ideas and want to be blue ocean, want to bring new things to market, but they just don't know how to get there and they don't know how to find the resources to get them there. So I just made it my mission to figure it out myself. And also, you know, Amazon, I knew it was a, a viable sales channel because there's no barriers to entry. So of course they started on Amazon But now I sell on Walmart, in uh, retail, brick and mortar retail channels, and I help others do the same. So for me, the big things that I focus on is product development, actually bringing new and interesting ideas to market, and then also really hammering down your marketing and connecting with your audience because that's what's going to take you to the next level. Yeah, branding, right? So we'll talk a little bit more about that because it's a big topic for me in this space, as you know. So it's about, you know, what can you create longevity, intrinsic value, and obviously the intellectual property. You're obviously someone who started before me, which is cool, because again, I don't have uh, very often uh, that I meet somebody who's done that, which is very cool. So you're flipping books, you came up with an idea for a product, you prototyped the product, then you realized um, you could sell that product, which is very cool. Uh, And then you were going into some more of the important points I want to unpack here, which was the branding component of it and the recognition. Can you speak a little bit to maybe the experience you had uh, what you saw before your product and what you see now. Let's kind of unpack that some. Well, I think at the same time, I guess, you know, I have to kind of put that out there. I I paid $42,000 for my molds to have my product made. And that was a lot of money. And I also wrote a business plan. I met with mentors. I realized I needed about $160,000 to get my business off the ground and moving to where it was scalable at that point. Like a lot of new entrepreneurs, when they're getting started, they don't do that groundwork. They just start and then they run out of money. And I didn't want to run out of money. I needed to be able to scale. I needed to be able to trademark, patent, brand, do all the things. Um, So I wrote a business plan, realized how much money I needed, raised that money, got moving. But the thing is, in the beginning, when you're first starting you have no idea how you're communicating your product, how you're communicating your branding. Um, and when I when I have those expensive molds to pay off, I'm actually a really good writer. I'm really good at SEO. So I started writing listings for other people as a service. And you know, my background in cybersecurity, I'm I'm kind of good at hacking things, if you will. So um, I'm really good with SEO, as I mentioned, and. Um, And I kind of have that mindset of figuring out how to fill in the gaps, right? I've always been a gap filler. You know, I'm an inventor. I'm a gap filler. Um, I figure out how to solve problems. So people would come to me. I I started on Fiverr and people would come to me with products that were very saturated. 
like, for example, a felt letter board. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, okay, what's your differentiation? Yeah, where's your unique selling? Yeah. Yeah, mine's pink. Okay, you're still going to be on page 20 of right. felt letter boards. You're so, going to be able to race to the bottom pricing. Yeah, exactly. So what I started doing is I would find new markets to sell those products to. So I would go and find words like, uh, keywords like office sign receptionist sign that I could sell that in and that none of the other people were marketing to. And so I would find these cool marketing strategies for these saturated products and get in front of those customers. And so those people started asking to consult with me because they would sell out of these saturated products. And they're like, how did you do that? Like, how did you even think to do that? And for me, I know a lot of people, especially in the Amazon space, they, they stay stuck in the data. And they don't ever think about the customer viewpoint. The most important thing about selling is getting in front of the customer. And if you're stuck in a saturated market and you can't make an offer in front of that customer that's fair enough, then you need to move markets. So for me, getting into branding was less about my own journey and more about now the thousands of brands that I've helped grow and sell more and more and more products by getting in front of the right customer. But in the beginning of my own product, it was definitely a learning journey, right? Because my product's different. I created a new category. So I had to kind of educate people on what my product was. And I didn't really know what to call it. It wasn't the same as like putting a felt letter board in an office sign category, right? So I, I had to kind of figure that out over time. And people absolutely love the product. And there's nothing better than bringing something to market that people are like, oh, finally, someone has solved my problem. A right? solution-oriented product, which is very smart because we know that many people, you know, they, they have a linear thinking, which I get, especially if they don't know what they don't know. And sometimes they don't know the questions asked. But as you and I know, and, and you're saying this very astutely, there are different levels of buyers in Amazon who are looking for things different ways. The most simplest explanation for me is that, you know, people call uh, pop in one area and soda pop in another. And some people call it Coke. It's just geographical or differentiation of the of how they view the product. And so what you've done is you've explained, I think, uh, if I understood it, um, that products can have a different viewpoint and certain products can even take on a different customer avatar, a uh, different customer profile, which gives you a unique selling position and even increases the price point of the product, right? Exactly. Exactly. So, you know, it's, and to me, it's fun. It's like a puzzle, you know, people need things and the best businesses serve those needs and connect with those customers. And that's what makes businesses successful. That's what takes businesses to the next level. So if, for me, it just all comes down to who is your customer and how do you get in front of, in front of them? And then how are you communicating your offer in a way that helps them know, like, and trust you and say, yes, I'm on this train. Yeah, that's fantastic because they are on Amazon. You and I know that. And I don't know that everybody appreciates that. I see so many people wanting to get into what I call Amazon's mosh pit, uh, which is that dirty, sweaty area somewhere down in the bestseller badges where everybody's bouncing around and there's a six foot four guy with the tattoos on everybody's slamming <laughs> into wondering why they're not making any money. And it's so rough. <laughs> Um, because so many of them go. And like you said, in three to four months, they run out of money and they didn't really have a plan of action in place. They didn't really have a strategy. Uh, when someone comes to you and says, okay, you know what? I've got this product. Here's my baby and it's not doing well and I need to resuscitate it. What do you tell them usually? Like, how do you evaluate things for them? Well, it, first of all, we always look at their numbers before anything else. So I don't do a lot of marketing in my business. I've never run a paid ad. <laughs> uh, word of mouth gets around. You know, unfortunately, people spend usually $30,000 plus on courses and they launch crap products before they come to me. And then they, they find out about me because they can't cry out for help in one of the groups. And people are like, you need to go to the fixer. You need to go see Amy Weiss and she's going to help you, you know. And so those are the people that I get because I don't, I don't run paid ads, right? And so people come to me and I'm like, okay, first of all, let's see if you actually have a business or if you're running a charity. And unfortunately, most people aren't making any money. I like the way you say that. If you're running a business or running a charity, um, the charity of Amazon, Amazon doesn't need your money. They're not out find, trying to feed small children like you. But they're happy to take it though. Well, like they're going to take yeah. all of your money and then some. So I know a lot of charity charities that are like that. <laughs> Only they at least take their money and put it towards the, the the you know house building or the food feeding. Amazon is like you know paying its shareholders. 
which is fine. It's a business. I get it. But I like the way you defined that. Yeah, it's you're not running a charity. You're running a business. So the first thing that we do is we look at their numbers. Most of the people that I meet who have been through some crap course that they saw on YouTube, you know, they're sourcing a product for $5 and selling it for 15 and nowadays, Amazon fees are up over 40% of your, of your margin. So like when, and then you calculate in advertising, like forget it. You're not, you're not making any money, you know, and most people are new and they don't know how to market. They don't think about the customer perspective. They just pay somebody else and they, they're not actually thinking about the sales funnel or connecting with their customer. Most people don't even know why people buy the particular product that they're selling, which I think is a key question that you must be able to answer. If you can't tell me why people buy, specifically why people buy the product that you're selling, you're in the wrong business. Yeah. So you're saying you can't just be based on the number of views and the price point, which I hear a lot of people arguing about. Well, in you terms can, of but you're in a losing game. I never want to be competing with a factory that doesn't know how to make money anyway. I've had factories as clients and most of them, they are losing money and they, because they don't know how to do anything but sell wholesale prices bulk. <laughs> so they don't look at the market in the same way. So why would I want to compete with a factory? Like they're willing to lose money. They think they're somehow going to make it up in the bulk side of things. So for me, there's just no, there's no appeal there. And it's not really a, a business. And like I tell people, I'm not mad at you. If you're making money doing that, if you're making money drop shipping or you're making money selling commodities, more power to you. If you like it and you're making money, good. Good for you. But to me, that's a job. That's not a business. That's a sellable asset that you're building. So cool. If you want a job, you go do you. You know, you do you, boo-boo. I'm not mad at you. But as long as you're making money and you're not running a charity, right? But the, the thing is, uh, the first thing that we go over when somebody comes to me is we go over their numbers. Like what, what are you paying for this product? What are you selling it for? What's your average advertising cost? Because most people have no idea how to run those core numbers. And if you don't know how to do that, you're on a shaky foundation and your house is going to fall <laughs> because it's going to quickly get ahead of you. And you're going to go, why don't I have any money? So we do that first and we make sure that we're good, right? The second thing that we do after we run the numbers and we, we make sure that we're, we're profitable, let's say we're not profitable. Then we look at the things we can control. We can control the cost that we pay for the supplier. We can sometimes control the price that we sell it for. We can control the look of the product. We can control the market we put it in front of. There might be another market we can put it in front of. We can control the sales channels. Often I'll find people, especially like with home goods, people sell home goods on Amazon and they like to compete with, uh, with factories. And this used to work very well on Amazon, but it doesn't work well anymore. And there's a ton of dot coms that are great for home goods that sell home goods at really higher price points. So then with the, a lot of those folks, I'll go and bring up their products on or a similar product on Wayfair or Overstock or one of the other home goods marketplaces. And, you know, the price, like, for example, the average price of a gold vase on Amazon is like $15. The average price on Wayfair is 70 yeah. So what you're saying is sometimes it makes sense to move channels in order to uh, increase profitability on products that may not currently be profitable on Amazon, move them to a different channel and potentially exactly. be profitable. Yep. To profitable so we just wanted, fun. like the bottom line is, can we be profitable with this product or do we need to liquidate it, look at it as a learning opportunity, liquidate it and move on. And so that's, that's what we do first before anything else. And then we move into, uh, if we can make it profitable or we are profitable, then we look at how can we be more profitable? Are there variations we can do? Are we in front of the right market? How much of the market are we stealing, right? Um, sometimes it's a matter of changing one word in our title and putting us on page one for a medium tail keyword. And suddenly that triples our sales overnight, as long as our offer is good. Yeah, as long as the offer is good. All right. Absolutely. Very well said. Uh, it's not often I get to talk to people with the level of knowledge that you have in this space. Um, and that's why I'm glad to have you on as a high voltage business builder, because you actually get the numbers. You know, if you've listened to me at all, I preach about the numbers to anybody that will listen, um, because it's the number one thing everybody misses. And they talk about time uh, as a major factor. Let's go into that for just a second, because it takes time to a degree uh, to do some of this the right way. Can you expand on some of that from your experience? 
Well, I think a lot of people have, you know, like I said, in the beginning, I I wrote my business plan. I figured out how much money I needed to make this thing happen. And I raised that amount of money. You don't always have to use your money. I love other people's money. It's good as long as, you know, it's profitable at the end of the day. But um, I think a lot of people are pitched this business idea of, you know, selling online or selling a product as a get rich quick kind of thing. And this is the long game. It takes time to really get your place in the market. Most of us don't have to learn sales funnels because Amazon already has that taken care of for us. So we don't have to do the brand awareness, interest, desire portions of the funnel because everybody's already at the action stage by the time they get on Amazon. But the problem is when we skip those parts of the funnel, we quickly become kind of desperate when we realize that all of our eggs are in Amazon's basket and we got no other part of the funnel built out. So if we launch product number two or product number three and we have zero audience off of Amazon and our Amazon fees are crazy, our competitors quickly kick our butt because they do have that very powerful rest of the funnel finished off of Amazon that they can send their customers through and have the option of them taking the action of buying on Amazon or buying on their website or both, right? But I think a lot of people don't realize in terms of time that this does take time and it is a real business. And if you treat it like a real business and you actually do study your sales funnel and understand who those customers are that are coming and buying your product and that you actually can reach them on other channels and they actually can become aware of your brand and take interest and engage with you. I think a lot of people don't allow themselves permission to do that. Yeah, we're in a rush, right? As you mentioned, and in, in the, the desperation world, the word kicked it a second ago. Obviously, if people are acting like a charity. Money's running out as they're getting involved. Uh, and, you know, it's hard to balance the difference between, I think, the, the world of online, which sometimes feels like almost instant income versus the real world, quote unquote. I'm going to jokingly say that ecom is a real world. But in the in the world of longer business scenarios, uh, 24 months is a minimum maturity for a business model. Is that your same experience? I know that is mine, but you know, can you echo that as well? The other thing that I ask people when they're, you know, when I kind of get the feeling that they have this idea of, you know, I want to, re- a lot of people I'll say, why do you want to do this? Like, what's your goal with your business? Right. And if they say, well, I really need some money. I tell them, well, you're probably in the wrong business <laughs> then because <laughs> you, this, this business, the payoff is later when you build that, that sellable asset. Right. And this is a scale game. And, you know, you're not going to pay for that 40% overhead of selling on some of these major e-com channels by uh, selling one product and hoping you you hit it big overnight, right? Like that's not that's not going to happen. So I think the, the big thing that people need to realize is what is your goal? If your goal is just to make some extra money and, you know, replace your, your income at your job, um, and you want to do that immediately, and you need money right now, <laughs> uh, then you should drop probably, ship. yeah, drop shipping, retail, yeah. arbitrage, retail arbitrage, you know, whatever, whatever is going to create service-based businesses, those are great, no inventory, right? But it's really difficult to, to do that, because when you have a product-based business, you have to take into account your supply chain, your logistics, your cap. Amazon holds on to 50% of our balance because, you know, just in case all of those products get returned or something. So, and then if you don't have enough margin, it's very hard for you to even expand sales channels, right? A lot of people go, okay, well, I, I'm going to expand to Walmart. I'm going to expand to Amazon Canada and Mexico, Amazon Asia, Amazon Australia, Okay, but all of those have different advertising channels, they have different overhead costs, they have different tax costs. So if you're not making any money on your main channel, how are you going to have the overhead and the money to invest and expand? So yeah, I agree. You have to, for me, it's all about planning. My background, I was a war planner in the military. For 20 years, I took big visions and turned them into executable steps. So for me, if you don't have a plan, 
and you don't know where you're going, like you're, you're stuck. You're just stuck. So I always have a plan. I always figure out, okay, well, where am I going? And so I try to do the same thing with clients. I try to sit down and go, where are you going? What are we trying to do here? And let's come up with a plan to do it. And then whether we use our money or somebody else's money or products to fill in the gaps or services, whatever we're doing, let's build that business and make sure we're actually serving a customer. And we can explain most importantly, why someone's going to buy from us and not somebody else. Very well said. Very well said. So any final thoughts, somebody listening to this right now who wants to get involved or uh, talk about Amazon or pros and cons, any final thoughts for anybody listening right now? I mean, not really. I would say give it a shot. It's a lot of fun. I love product development. I love building new things. And, and it, this industry is incredible. You know, e-commerce is just awesome. The people like Neil um, that you're going to meet are just incredible. Uh, I've made some of the best friends of my life in this industry. I love in, going to industry events, stuff like that. So, you know, you guys can reach out anytime. I do offer a free service. And it's a listing review. So if you ever, if you have a listing that you're not making sales on, or you're, you're just like, I don't know what's going on. My PPC is costing me too much money. I enjoy this. So go to my website, amazingathome.com and underneath the services menu, click free listing review. And you just tell me what your link is and you tell me what your problem is. And I will send you a video of me just like the customer would going through your listing and saying, oh, this doesn't make sense to me. I don't like this, change this, or you're doing everything right. Congratulations, right? So uh, so that, if that's the way I can help the community today and provide value, I'd love to do it. Thank you, Amy, for that. I appreciate that. I'm honored to have you on here. Thanks for sharing your insights and information. Folks, check her out uh, on her website. Look her up on LinkedIn. And I know she's on Facebook. Get that free listing opportunity. Have her give you some insight. It could make a big difference in your business. Thanks for coming on today. 